Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. If you are an experienced Word user, you will notice that the interface in Word 2010 is similar to the interface used in Word 2007. For new users of the program, as with any program, you should begin by familiarizing yourself with your working environment. This is where we will begin exploring Word 2010. If this is the first time that you have used Word, then the first thing to notice is that the Word screen consists of two windows. The application window, which is the outer frame, and the document window, where you create your actual document content. The document window opens up inside of the application window. So the document window is where you create and modify your documents. You may close the document window without closing the entire Word application. This allows you to open and close different documents without having to restart the program. You may have several documents open at the same time in Word. Now when you close the application window, Word itself will close. It will also prompt you to save any open documents that you are working on before closing. Now we will point out the names and locations of several tools that you will need in order to create your Word document. The first object that we'll point out is the ribbon that appears at the top of the application window. This tool is where you can find all of the tabs, button groups, and commands available for use within the Word program. For upgrading users from versions prior to Word 2007, you will find that the new ribbon both replaces and combines the older menu bar and the various toolbars like the standard toolbar and the formatting toolbar that you have been used to using. Now we will discuss this and other tools in separate lessons within this chapter. You will also need to familiarize yourself with the new file tab that is located in the upper left corner of the ribbon. Clicking this button allows you access to the most common file functions, such as creating a new document, saving documents, and printing. Now above the ribbon is the Quick Access Toolbar. You can easily add buttons to this toolbar for the commands that you use most frequently and wish to always have available. You will notice several important buttons are already set here. You have Save, Undo, and Redo. You can also easily remove buttons that you've added to this toolbar as well. Now at the very top of the window, you'll also see the name of your current document that you have open. This will appear to the right of the Quick Access Toolbar in an area known as the Title Bar. Now below all of the tools, the current document window is displayed. This is where you create the actual content of the document, and most of the actual work within Word will be done in the document window. At the right side of the document, you'll see a vertical scroll bar. You may also see a horizontal scroll bar at the bottom of your document if your document is wide or if you zoom in on the document. You can use the vertical scroll bar to scroll up and down through your document content. You can use the horizontal scroll bar, if shown, to scroll left and right across the document. Now speaking of zooming the document, you can now easily zoom in to increase the document's magnification or zoom out to decrease the magnification using the zoom slider that appears in the lower right corner of the window. Now also, to the left of the zoom slider, you can see the various document view buttons that allow you to switch the view of your document as needed. So now that we have an overview of the major on-screen elements, where they are located by default and what they are called, we can now look at the general use and functionality of the various on-screen elements within the Word application. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.